Hello, welcome to the fourth part of my Second Life scripting tutorials. Today we're going to look at variables. A variable is like a bucket. You can put things into the bucket. You can look in the bucket to see what's there. You can empty the bucket so there's nothing in it. You can put different things in the bucket. You can change its contents. Or you can delete the bucket entirely. And variables are exactly that. We can store information in a variable. We can check back later to see what was stored. We can overwrite the information in a variable or we can delete it entirely. And in programming this is called CRUD, which is create, read, update, or delete CRUD. And those are the four common things you would want to do with data. And that's exactly what we can do with variables. So a variable consists of three things. We need to give it a type, so we need to say what type of data we're going to be storing. We need to give a variable a name so that we can refer to it later on. And then we need to give it the data itself. Naming a variable is easy enough, just choose a name. Putting in data is easy enough as well, and we'll look at that in a second. But before we create a variable, we need to know what type of data we're going to be storing. And data comes in several types. Uh, I'll show you some examples here, and I'm actually I'm going to uh, I'll just put some examples in our default state here. Uh, the first data type I'll show you is an, it's called an integer, and an integer is just it, you probably know from math, but an integer is just a whole number, and that's all it is. So I'm going to create a new integer, I'm going to call it example, and then you just set a number just like that, and that's a whole number. Uh, I don't need to put quotes or anything around it, I just give it a number, and it knows then that it's an integer. If I wanted to store a, uh, a decimal number, a not a fraction, the other one, <coughs> um, <laughs> this is called a floating point number so it's not a whole number it's it's got a uh, it's got more to it um, and I'll call that example B and in this case I could store pi 3.14159 whatever semicolon and this is a floating point number because this is the point and I can I can have a point anywhere in here I could have it there I could have it there or I could actually have it there I could have point zero as as although it's a it looks like an integer because it's point zero. it's actually a different type of number you'd think it's the same data but it's not it means something different and therefore it's a floating point number and that's just called a float uh, we can also store strings and a string is a b c d whatever or numbers or funny characters or little smileys or anything you want in a string really uh, i'll call that example c now a string must be inside quotes i've got a i've got a use double quotes and then I can put a string in there I could store ASDF or a smiley or a heart or even numbers um, if I stored numbers like this in a string I couldn't then do mathematical operations on it I couldn't divide it by 2 or multiply it by 10 because it doesn't know it's a number it thinks it's a string and this is why data types are important so that's an example string I'll just leave it as, as ASDF the one thing I cannot put in a string is double quotes because if I put in double quotes it gets confused it, th it thinks that is the end of the string and then doesn't know why this other set of double quotes is here it gets confused what I can do is I can escape the double quotes which means putting a backslash in front of it and then that tells uh, actually let me just make sure that works um, that should tell LSL there we go this backslash here means that I don't mean double quotes in the way it thinks I mean double quotes. It will store it inside the string, so it, it ignores it and uses it as part of the string, which I've highlighted, and then it uses the double quotes outside to encapsulate the string, to know that it's it's all a string. What else have we got? We've got keys. Um, if you've used Second Life for longer than 10 minutes, you should know what a key is. Uh, a key is a very long, it looks like a string, but it's not. Uh, of stuff, I'll call it example D, and everything has a key in Second Life. As a player, I have a key, so I can, as an avatar, so I can right click on myself and go to profile, and here's my key and my stupid avatar picture. Uh, so I can highlight my key, copy that, and then I can paste it in. Now you can see I've still used double quotes because if I didn't use double quotes it gets upset, it doesn't understand what all these hyphens are I can only use numbers without double quotes I have to put a key in double quotes and then it knows then that I'm talking about a key and, 
and that key refers to me as an avatar. So if I'm animating an avatar, I need to know the key of the avatar. Also, if I'm displaying a texture, if I go into my in inventory, <laughs> got it, and go into textures, uh, I can right click and uh, go to properties and it should show me, no, it doesn't. Uh, let's find one I've got permissions for. I can right click, I can copy, here it's got a slightly different name, the UUID, um, unique, user, uh, unique something ID. And that's actually the key. So if I copy that to my clipboard and paste it into my script, that's now the texture. So if you want to change textures on a face of a prim or something, you store the keys of the texture. The same way of doing uh, the contents of a prim, if you're doing that, you need to know keys and all that stuff. So keys is referring to stuff within Second Life. Another type of data we've got is called a vector. Uh, example E. And a vector is a set of 3D coordinates. Now obviously we're in a 3D space, I can move up, down, left, right, and uh, uh, fly about, and forward and back. So up, down, left, right, forward and back, those are the, the three axes. And uh, so this is a 3D environment, and therefore I need to have 3D coordinates. Now I'm editing a prim, it shows me the three. I've got red, which is the first coordinate, I've got green, which is the second, and blue, which is the third. And if I go into object, you can see here, these are the coordinates, red, green, and blue, X, Y, and Z. Now the nice thing about Firestorm is I can go ahead and I can copy this position, these coordinates, by pressing the C button here. And then I can paste it into my script, and it will format it how the script expects a vector data bit to be formatted. Um, and that will work straight away, that will work beautifully. How is it formatted? Well, it's very easy. I have a, a an open angular bracket, which is the, the less than sign, shift comma on my keyboard. Uh, I close it again with shift dot on my keyboard. And then inside I put three coordinates. So the first one, comma, second one, comma, third one. And you can see it's done this for me. And actually these are, you can see these are floats, because for precise movements in world, you can't just have whole numbers, you can't have integers. It needs floating point variables to understand uh, the finer detail of a coordinate, and that's the format it's in. So that's a vector. Rotations are, um, to be honest, a bit beyond me. If I go example F, a rotation is, it's exactly the same as a vector, but it has a fourth number. A rotation in 3D space uh, has four numbers when stored in the, the, the default Second Life format. I've forgotten what it's called, but we'll get on to rotations later. So this is a, a four-digit number, one, two, three, four, sorry, uh, yeah, four coordinates in, in a rotation. There we go, just as an example. Uh, and to, uh, radians, sorry, these are called. When you've got four axes on a rotation, that's called a radian rotation, I think. Uh, the other way of doing it is in degrees, and that's, that uses three axes. And I think if I copy from here and paste in here, it uses the wrong format for script. A script doesn't understand that kind of rotation by default. You can still work with it using clever math, but uh, by default it needs this, these four, four dimensions to do a rotation. And the last type of data is storing a list. A list example G. Lists are cool because uh, quite often you'll want to store more than one bit of data. If I'm loading a list of animations in my dance ball, I don't just want to load the first animation, I want to have the complete list in a variable, and then later on I can cycle through that list. And a list is done with square brackets. And inside these square brackets I put whatever data type I want, and I can have one, I can have, I can have none, I can leave it like this and just have an empty list. I can have one string, for example and just leave it like that, and that is a list with one item, or a bucket with one item. Uh, I said bucket. The second is, uh, or I can have a second item, and I can put in a second string, and you can see I can use a comma here to, it's called delimiting, it's a, it's a comma to separate the two values. And I can have as many values as I want. And I can use as many different data types as I want. Lists are, are kind of unique in this way. I could have another list, example h, and I could put in a string, I could put in a number, I could put in a floating point, I could put in a rotation, uh, sorry, a, a vector. And you can see I can store all, all these different data types. 
I shouldn't really mix them, although I can, it doesn't mean I should. It's better to stick to one data type in, in, in a list. Um, if you've done programming before, you might be used to arrays. Um, arrays are quite cool because you can store an array in an array. It means you can have a, th a two-dimensional or a three-dimensional array. Uh, unfortunately, you can't do that in Second Life. You can only store in one dimension. You can have a flat list. But there are ways of working with lists to mimic that behavior. And uh, I'll probably cover that later on as well. But to get started, that's enough for us. We've got these are the data types. And that's how you store information in, an, in a variable. And then later on, you can refer to that variable doing various things. So uh, let's use an example. I'm going to delete all this. Uh, and then, if you remember at the last of my, uh, at the end of my last video, we looked at storing which avatar was touching the prim, which avatar wanted to start dancing. And I'm going to store that in a variable. Um, now it's going to be a key because we're talking about avatars. It's going to give us the key of that avatar. Keys are brilliant because in, instead of giving us the username, which may or may not include resident, or instead of giving us the display name, which could change every week, it gives us the key, and the key never changes. It's guaranteed to be unique, and it will never change. So we know exactly what avatar we are always talking about. And I'm going to ju I'm just going to call the variable avatar, and I'm going to set it by using a built-in function, and I'll cover those hopefully in the next video, I think. Um, I'm using a built-in function called LLDetectedKey0. Now, this function here returns the key of the avatar that just touched the prim. So when this touch start event is fired, when that's triggered, It'll call this function and it will store in key avatar the key of whoever touched it. And then, just for example, I'm going to say that out in local chat. I'm going to say avatar. And so this is reading the information from the variable. It's like looking in the bucket here. I'm just calling avatar and that will say it in public chat. Now, if I save changes here, it's going to go, oh no, it's going to break. It should break didn't break. It will give us a script error in a second. The reason it will give us a script error, and let me just try and prove this, if I touch the script um, it should get upset. Oh, it didn't. Normally it would. Um, the reason being LSL is very strict, and I wish that had broken, because normally it will. Um, LSL is, is very script, strict in the data types that it uses. Um, when you call a function, a built-in function, like LL say, which is talking on a channel, it expects two things to be told. It will expect um, the channel number, and zero means local chat. Um, one, two, and three, and, and so on, aren't displayed to people. You can use that for other clever stuff later. And then it will expect a string of, of what to say in in local chat. I know what will throw an error. If I tr try and say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it should say, hey, that's not a string. I need to, there we go, I need a string. Function call mismatches type or number of arguments. So it knows the type is wrong. This isn't a string. I guess a key is kind of relaxed because we're using, uh, you can store keys with double quotes. I guess that's kind of relaxed on, on uh flipping between strings and keys. In that case we use something called type casting. And our type cast is where you convert from one type to the other. Now I'm not going to store it anywhere, I'm just converting for the sake of saying it in, in public. And you do it by putting the type of sorry, the data type you want in brackets, followed by the variable. Now what this does is it takes the key avatar and it converts it to a string. Now when I save this it should work rather well. And when I touch the prim, there's my key. So that's type casting. I'm converting between different types. The next thing we need to learn about is scope. I'm sorry this is quite a long video but this is all important stuff to cover. Um, 
and I'm about to run. I've got five seconds left. So in the next video, let's cover scope. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.